I'd like to thank One Million Cups and Mary and Katie for helping us get on our way. Uh, my, back, my, my background is in engineering and organizational leadership. Yeah, my name is Aaron Wimple, like Joe said. And I'm the author of Family Law 2.0 and founder of this Clean Law Social Enterprise. We converge scientific law and family law for next generation safety policies. But today, I'd like to introduce you to my wonderful grandmother. Um, grandmother battled breast cancer, had heart problems, and diabetes most of her life. And she did it all with grace. She passed away this past February. And, but what's that have to do with this presentation, you might be asking yourselves? Well, it's people like our grandmothers who teach us the values that are in Family Law 2.0 that teach us the dividends of putting others before ourselves. And hopefully at the end of this presentation, you can tell me if it's a viable part of my business or not. So what is this Family Law 2.0? First is a licensed practice. Think about like insurance. Um, like when grandmother passed away and the bills kept coming in and the final expenses were adding up, uh, there was, it can leave a financial gap. But the solution for responsible people like, like our grandparents is a financial infusion or financial insurance. That's like Family Law 2.0. Or think of it like pictures that grandmother left behind to help the family deal with their grief. That's like Family Law 2.0. Or think of grandfather driving grandmother back and forth to the doctors when she was ill. That's like Family Law 2.0. The number of divorces are 787,251 per year. According to the CDC, from 45 reporting states in DC, and there's a national average of 2.2 children per family. That's about 2 million children of divorce annually without a nuclear family. And a lot of us know what a sore spot this is. It's a pain point for children and it's a pain point for a lot of adults too, including judges and lawyers and social workers and everyone who has to deal with the fallout. Two million children of divorce annually without a nuclear family. We should ask ourselves though, how did grandma, grandmother gracefully deal with her vulnerabilities? The solution to financial vulnerabilities, financial, to financial vulnerabilities are financial infusions like insurance to add balance. The solution to grandmother's traveling vulnerability was a transportation infusion in the form of a grandfather who took her back to the doctors. Even the solution to help prevent grandma, uh, family grief with pictures left behind is a balanced infusion. So the solutions to vulnerabilities are these external infusions. Look at life insurance, uh, pictures, and even grandfather. Two million children annually grow up with the absence of a nuclear family. The problem that my company solves is system vulnerability. There's only a deconstructive law and no constructive law. Negative forms like divorce filings, fighting files that last for years and years on and on and a deconstructive system without any constructive system for balance. Introducing the infusion of a constructive law system. Positive forms, child safety files, and a new constructive system. Family Law 2.0 with child safety files hopes to be a system infusion. The coolest factor is that nothing has to change. Judges are elected officials. They should want a license because who will we vote for, right? Someone who has this new license or someone who doesn't. Um, lawyers. Lawyers should want this because who would we hire? A lawyer with this license or a lawyer without? You know, it's, it's lawyer friendly. Parents will like this and want this system because it adds safety, value, peace of mind and dividends to their children and families. And social workers will love it 
and they're required to take a mandatory number of hours for their trade every year anyway. Two million children annually grow up with the absence of a nuclear family. The solution, my grandmother and family law 2.0, is, is, is these child safety files, one of my company's products. So the question I have, what I really don't know is, is this a good and viable product for the market? Is that it? That is it. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Please wait for the microphone if you have a question and be forewarned, it is very loud. Very first. Okay, what is a child safety file? Do you know the old tan envelopes that they used in the, English, in the legal system that are just generic? These are like special files for the children. Um, the forms are standard, kind of developed by child psychologists. What would encourage this child through that time in their life? The folder itself is just something pretty to put the forms in. You know what I mean? And the forms are developed by child psychi psychologists to work with the child to help them through that time in their life and to store up positive, constructive things about them in this family. So it's like a individual divorce plan, the way they have individual education plans in school. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. I had the same question as her. Um, so I'm going to come up with a new one. Let me think. <laughs> so are these the physical files or are they online? They are actually putting to both. They're, they're physical files right now, but we do we are working on a digital version as well and an app version. So there will be an online form to fill out these form, online system to fill out these, fill out these forms and also an app to go along with it eventually. So you can just do it right from your smartphone. Thank you. Great. Uh, so, a couple of questions that come up for me. So, the, the child safety files, that's that's one product. It also sounds like the licensing aspect is another product that you're going to be providing for the marketplace. Is that true? Yes. Well, these child safety files, whether it's the physical version or the digital version, they, they can be uploaded and stored in a database. You would have to have a Federal Law 2.0 license to store them in this database. There is a patent pending on the database as well. So, to be able to operate that database for the license because not everyone's qualified. Okay. Um, so as we think about you as a licensing agent, is that the business model that you're pursuing? Is that's where the, the income comes in? Yes. More, it's a, if it's viable. If, if the public thinks if the market thinks it's a, a working product, yes, it will be a clearinghouse for licenses. So you'd have to qualify, take your exam, get a license, then you can use the system. Thank you. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, is this a good viable product? Yes. Um, so who buys it? Who sells it? Uh, and are you and do you have a plan for then engaging this customer base? Because that's going to answer your question: is engaging your customer base. But who buys it? Who sells it? That's probably your first question to answer. Right. It, it would be my company offering the tests, and the exams, and then theoretically the judges would take the exam, get their license, and then it would be qualified to handle these child safety files. Lawyers could come take an exam, get their license, and then they're qualified to practice these child safety files. Does that answer the question? So we would be the clearinghouse, so there would be an annual maintenance fee. And I think I forgot to put it in this slide for our competitors, it's like the Bar Association. The judges and lawyers are licensed anyway through the State Bar Association. And they pay money to get that license for that system, so that likewise they would pay money to process their files in our system. Is there a deficit currently in how information goes back and forth among judges, lawyers, parents, social workers? Is this going to be one-stop shopping for people, and that's what makes it much more useful, cost-effective, whatever? Uh, thanks for the question, Mary. No, there's not much of a de deficit. There are some inconsistencies and jinx in the system. We're trying to complement their system. We don't want to, you know, push them out of the market and just be a one-stop shop. We actually want to work with them. 
And that's what the patent does. It actually works our filing system in with their filing system so we can work together. So they do have some problems. We hope this will clean their, their problems up, but we don't want to be just a one-stop shop. We actually want to work with the courts and the family law practice. Is it going to make it easier or faster for them to access information? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, they, I mean, they're not necessarily on the forefront of technology, so I think there would be some incentive to automate more of their systems. Also, there's not much inclusion when it comes to what are these children going through. You know, there's no study, there's no research, there's no way to incorporate how this is affecting children in their system. So this is a one way for more inclusive processing of cases and more inclusive decisions. Okay, have you got testimonials from social workers about what they want to see so the kids don't fall through the cracks? Some, yes, and it's been mixed. Um, to start off, they really love the idea and they love working with us, but once, once they think it's like a replacement, then they, they're standoffish, they don't like it. So it's kind of, it's, it's been a trade-off. Communities, the community loves it because they like having their child, their children included, and we get together and talk about our kids and practice these files just as a community. But social workers are still on the fence about it. I'm just a little confused. Is this, it seems like it's an accreditation almost, or is it a service? And so if it's an accreditation, to some extent, who's accrediting you? I mean, it's, you know, and, and so I'm just a little confused on your business model. I mean, if it's, hey, this, you know, what, this is one place to you know, combine everything, systematize, and you know, make things uniform for this for family law, that's one thing. It's one thing to say, if you have this accreditation, you're able to use this, this, this system and to build up that sort of credibility, that's a real stumbling block. So I'm just confused kind of what the company no, is no, going that's for. That's a great question, Joe. Uh, that's a great question. There's a patent pending for the system. Would, um, so that's one form of accreditation. The book is licensed through an international rights holding company. So it's it's the ultimate clearinghouse for, these, for the Family Law 2.0 name. Um, Third thing is, uh, well, the book itself. You know, if you if you're the author of the book, you, know, you have rights to that title, copyrights, any patents that come from that, any intellectual property that comes from that. And uh, Mississippi College of law professor Alina Boyd, you know, she's the one that actually encouraged me to uh, license it. She's a family law professor, and she's also has a side patent business. So she says it's viable. So those are four things. I'm hoping it's accredited. Um, We'll see if they I guess, come my, after I guess my point is that if you have an accreditation, I mean, if you have, if you're accredited with this, there has to be some sort of, you know, for example, in my business, there's a CFP, and right. you have your CFP that people say, well, he's, you know, honestly, he's, he's probably got this bare minimum of skill, you know, skill set with him. Is that what you're going for? And it's for if someone has, you know, this accreditation, that it's a sort of barometer of at least. Some sort of a modicum of, you know, of professional skill. Is that what you're going for? I'm just I'm, I'm a little lost at where your your wedge is in well, the market. There's I have never found any documentation for anyone who's tried to convert scientific law and family law. So there's no current clearinghouse for any type of accreditation that I know of. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. So I I just try to cover all my bases. Okay, if this is what I'm going to do and this is how I'm going to do it. And I'm on a couple of bases with the patent office, with the copyright, with the uh, international clearinghouse. I'm hoping I'm covered, and with the law professors, a witness, whoever, hopefully testify for me if a case came up against me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I'm covered, but I'm on new, I'm on uncharted territory. I guess is what I'm saying. I don't know 100. Yeah. percent Sorry. But hopefully you can help me if if you see something that I don't see. I would yeah. appreciate. It. So is this a service? Sorry about that. Is this a service that is offered? by the attorney, it's a license that he has to get, and he, he says this is an additional service I can provide for you, and it's an additional cost? Yes, sir. It is. It's more, it's more the Lord that it can do. It's more a service work for the attorneys. Not, not for my company, my company is a license and they do the service. Okay, so, I'm in the medical profession, Doctors can be board certified in a specialty. Is there such a thing in the law profession? This might be the start of that. 
You can be certified in family law. Or you can be, you know, this is board certified. If you can come up with that kind of concept for the law, the way you have it in medicine, that might be the way to go. Otherwise, it seems like this is something for parents, for the good of the children, a list of questions to ask when they go to a lawyer, when they go to a financial guy, when they go to a social worker. Questions to ask about what's going to be for the good of the children and what ducks they have to get in a row. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I I'm still a little confused. Maybe you can clarify a little bit. Sure, I'll try. Where is your market? Who, who is your customer? Is it uh, family law industry? Is it couples who are divorced? Is it the social services, family law portion of uh, government? Or, or just what? In other words, who, would, who is it? And then how, how do you approach it? How do they find you? Yes, sir. Thank you for your question. Um, I would see it starting off as being the lawyers. Um, if they want to do extra or do more for, their, for the families they represent, they would be the main customers to start with. And social workers seem to be a viable market. And we have had some success working with social workers in my community. So I think they would be a viable market. Um, Two million children of divorce annually is a pretty big big market in just the family court system, but if you add in the children of abuse and neglect with the social workers, that's, that's another big market as well. And I, I see it as ultimately being something like teachers could use to address bullyism cases. Children who are bullied, you know, might need this extra help of a constructive forms or system, whatever. We are trying to work with the school right now in my community. Um, or people in domestic abuse situations. But in that case, who would we market? I guess it would be the domestic abuse shelters. Maybe they could be licensed in this project to help, help their victims. That sounds, that sounds like it's like across the industry, which, which is I think it was. I think it would be. Marketplace. Because you know, nobody's ever done the scientific law converge with classical law before. Whether it's family law or criminal law or whatever, it's, it's kind of unheard of. But you know, when you think about scientific law, engineers, that's what they use to build things like skyscrapers and bridges and and the big things in life. You know, it's a constructive law practice, whereas family law is like divorce negatively. So if you could combine the two for the sake of the children and specifically the constructive law for the children, I don't see a downside, whether it's working in the social worker market or the attorney market. I think it would almost be universal. How can people find you that might need some service along that line? Is there a website out there? Yes, sir. Uh, cleanlaw.today is the website. Okay. And when I put that subscription service up there, that's where it is. Or you could uh, contact that website and uh, ask any questions you would like. That would answer them. Great. So another follow-up question. What it sounds like, and, and please correct me if I've got this wrong. Sure, sure. Um, the people who are benefiting from this service are the kids. They're, they're hopefully right. They're, at the end of the day, they're they're the client that actually gets the outcome change. Yes. And the yeah. ones buying the actual product are the ones serving the youth. There's two million kids. Yes. So anybody that interacts with kids in a helper role, especially kids that maybe don't have a nuclear family to be their their agents uh, out in the world and their and their kind of voice out there. So you're helping the helpers. Yes. create better outcomes for kids yes sir. okay um, so I hear the, the sheets and the forms and the folders that part I get what is the, the actual law aspect of of this product that allows it how, how does law help the kids is this for hearings during divorce is this for uh, foster placement folks who's, who's really the one going to be using the law aspect Primarily, it was designed for the children who are going through a divorce, and, and we saw that have several positive effects on these children. Um, but then we noticed a social worker market um, 
child advocates in my area. My county in Illinois is the second highest reported child abuse in Illinois. So we started working with counselors, with social workers, and it seemed to really help that market. Um, so I think that it started off with divorce and really it didn't even mean to turn it to a business. There's just, everybody's doing it and I'm the one paying for all the files and everything. I can't really do it unless I turn it to a business or get money involved somehow. It was just a free thing in our community. So if it helps one child or two or 10, you know, I'm, I'm happy. You know, it's, it's not even about the money. But we are trying to go into schools or trying to see if we can do more for children in that situation in schools. We think, because we think that children of divorce in schools, the children who go through some type of abuse obviously need some extra help. We just think this will be a tool for some extra help. You know, it might not be the end all final tool they need. Obviously they might need a lot of lifetime of therapy, but this might be one thing specifically designed to get them through that point in their life. Because that point in their life, going through a trial is, is terrible for kids. So uh, you mentioned this a couple of times, the bridging of scientific law to classical law. And it seems like you're offering a first product that you're going to expand into a general concept to offer other products. So both, is this a correct assumption? And as well, when you mean scientific law to classical law, do you mean like, you know, we have patent attorneys for patents and business attorneys for business. Are you looking for like a further subclassification? Like building scientific law, specializing in, in like green energy, things like that. No, they're two different things. When you think of patent attorney, that's one specific group who handles things through the court system. If you think of a fa classical family lawyer, they're one particular group industry that handles things through the classical uh, court system. We're not even in that court system. We're out here in the environment. You know, scientists, they study things, they build things, they know how deep to dig this foundation on this building, how much concrete to put down in there and how, how strong these peers have to be to support all this force in this building here. Those are the types of scientific facts we'll be working with, actual data. And the things that we don't really sell, but that have come out of this are like new policies, like we have what's called Madison's Initiative. In her case, her, her one of the attorneys continued and continued that case for two years before the divorce was ever settled. And during that time, there doesn't have to be any visitation or anything. So we wrote a legislative initiative to try to get in the Supreme Court called Madison's Initiative to reduce that time of continuance down to 30 days. So they're, they're really two different things. But if you look at the family law system through a scientific lens, you get some things that can make things better for the children. You know, we're both focusing on the children. We're just doing it in two different ways, I would say. They are two different ways. Right. So um, just... FYI, the, in the construction industry, your mm -hmm. constructive law, if you will, is based on physics and, yes, and safety and scientific, hard science things. Yes, Whereas in family law, it's more based on psychology, soft science stuff. So that makes it a harder sell in the first place. But you said that you've had success among abused kids in your county. Yes. Okay, and the people who are working with them are the social workers, I'm assuming, in your county, trying to prevent child abuse or mitigate it? Yes, that's Okay, there's money there. There are foundations, there are not-for-profits that are there to support and end child abuse. If you've got a product that they can use, that they can, be, they can verify somebody's license in, and that's where your money is. That's where your initial proof of concept is going to be. Yeah, yeah. It's a good thought. Yes, thank you, Barry. You mentioned that you're going to have child safety funds. And there's going to be like a license for database access, I assume, to these funds. Yes. Now, wouldn't some of this information be rather sensitive? It might fall under federal regulation for HIPAA. But also, we have 50 different jurisdictions in this country governing family law. How are you going to deal with that? Well, the, the different di jurisdictions, you know, they're, this is more like common law. It's, I see the cracks in your system, and I'm trying to bridge it for the kids. If, if, if they want to drag me into that, jurisdiction and question me there, I'm okay with that. So I don't I don't see each human being as 
happy to be in this jurisdiction. We're doing this best for people. I'm not going to make your question about sensitive information. I'm not going to make a file about anybody else's child. That's that's on their parents to do. You know, if, if, if a lawyer, if a judge orders a lawyer that he wants to see these files, and the lawyer advises his clients to do these forms for the children, then they can or they can't. You know, that's a personal choice. Um, it's parents who do these for their children. It's, it's not people doing them for other people. And, like, but it benefits, like, even in my case, I haven't seen my oldest son in 27 years now. And it's not because I didn't try. It's not because I didn't take the legal road. I just, the system is rigged against me. I don't get to see my kid enough. I try to fight visitation. There's nothing that's going to force the visitation. So for me, it's like an exophile. You know how soldiers have these exoskeletons to help them carry weight through battles? You know, it's like an exophile for a child like mine. I don't get to see him, but I get to work on these files. So that might be a market too. You know, I get to do stuff for my kid even though I'm not in his life. And what was your first question? It was regarding the federal regulations like HIPAA, oh. restricting the access to information. In this case, uh, you mentioned that that license for database access that would allow either a uh, social worker right. or a parent or some other third party that has an interest in gaining access to the information. Right. Possibly be very sensitive. Right, and that probably goes back to what Murray says. It's, it's, that would be like a medical, a, a medical area that I'm not 100 percent familiar with. I know we do have. We're working on a 20 a book, a policy called the 2020 Family Bill to try to get this, this idea more inclusive. And we're working with a congressional member right now. Uh, maybe he has some ideas about federal regulations if they need change or if we can even do this, you know, maybe that is a squashy blabber effort, a business killer right there, I don't know. So I'm trying to understand when you talk about the file, the data, uh, a file is empty until you have data to put into it, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So help me out, Mary. So the situation is something has to happen before that file is created. That's the cool thing about this business, not necessarily. If, if a child is just having a bad day and you want to do some, something formally constructed for them that might encourage them, it doesn't have to be a legal issue. It doesn't have to be a case. It could be, hey, I'm doing this for my child just because he's having or, a bad or day. Or even a counselor at a school. A counselor at a school. So, so, so maybe to monetize it, it's something that you can present to school districts and counselors at schools, especially when you have children being bullied so much. Yeah. And then after the fact, and I hate to bring this up, school shootings, absolutely, and stuff like that. Uh, and on a final note, uh, has your son reached out to you yet? I don't. I, it's weird. I got a weird Happy Father's Day text on Father's Day, so I'm kind of hoping, but I don't know for sure. No, um, I've tried reaching out to him, but sometimes that that's not the right move to take because it can backfire and alienate the two of them farther. So. I'm just praying about it, man. Just trust me. And, and, and I've been where you are. Yeah. He will reach out to you. Thank when you. he does, be ready. Yes, sir. Last question right here, Josh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, James touched on that the point about kind of what your motivations are, like why you started it. Um, is your modus operandi like the rectification of what you felt was a system stacked against you? And, not to try to exploit your personal situation for like consumer gain, but is that like a rallying, a rallying cry around this product that others may be attracted to, that they also felt that a, system, a legal system wrong, and this is a way to rectify it? Yeah, I, I, I'm sure there's some of that, there's always some of that, and, but it's, it's up to the market, you know, it's, it's really out of my hands, it's, it's what people want. It's just, is it something that that you would buy to help your child or help support some other child through that system? I don't know. I think that's not my question to answer. I know that happens that people do, do kind of try to change policies or whatever they can civically to rectify that situation. But I don't think this is that. This is this is more business. Um, I see I see a way to implement my education and my practice in this area to kind of help them help themselves, you know what I mean? 
I can't do it for them. I can't do it for the lawyers and judges. I can't do it for society or the market. They probably won't even want it, but if they do, here's how you could do it and, and make the system a little better. And in the meantime, if you're collecting this data, you know, you can make the next generation of policies a little bit smarter for kids, a little bit safer for kids, because you're gonna have all this information that legislators can use, because essentially, you know, state legislation, it's like court too, it's just a lot of fighting until one side or the other caves. So if you had this information about what that's doing to children, I think it can make a lot of uh, safer policies for Jeff City or Washington, D.C. Because you'd have a lot more information for them. You know, we wouldn't have to be burying our kids with debt after debt after debt just because we're too blindsided to look in the future when they're adults. What's that doing to them? You know, I think it can help eliminate national debt. So to speak. All right, and so the final question, which, are, which we always ask, is what can, we, what can the community do for you? Uh, essentially, is this a viable product? You know, am I just wasting my time spending you know, so is there a need for this? I know it's something I am probably passionate about, probably too passionate sometimes, but is it viable? All right, well, well thank, thank you very much. much.